people, this is Shai Harris, and today is another edition of Interviews with the Rebel. And today we have uh, entrepreneur, we have uh, pretty much just hustler. I feel like it's a good adjective for you. That is. Yeah, you have about six, seven jobs. So <laughs> we have Miss Benicia Hernandez. How are you doing today? I am so well. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. No problem. Once I kind of brought this back at the beginning of the year, I knew I had to get you up here sooner or later. Yeah. You know, I felt some type of way. I said, Did you? you don't have me on his Did show. Did you? Yeah. I said, I see all these people up here and he ain't had me on his show yet. I had to have you. I know you've been out here working and grinding for a little minute and I've been like I said, we met probably about two years ago, mm -hmm. but ever since then, I just kind of seen you actually, you know, you really be putting in work. Yeah. So, you, so do you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do a little sign. I do a little sign. So for the people that don't know you, who are you and what do you do? So I am Benicia Hernandez mm -hmm. and um, by trade, uh, all of my education is uh Towards my license, I'm a licensed professional counselor. Okay, okay. That is my profession. But okay. um, now my life really consists of being an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. Okay. So I am a lot of different things. You wear a lot of different hats. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So let's start with a, a little icebreaker question. Okay. All right. So if your life was a movie, if a, the movie is called Benicia, what would be the three to five songs that would be on your soundtrack? Oh, Lord. <laughs> And these are songs, like, you don't got to be current songs, because songs, like, mean something to you, like, during the course of your life. Okay. Um, okay, so I know one of the songs that I really, really like. Really? Should I, like, yeah, I, yeah. I need, I should have been prepped for this question. <laughs> That's <laughs> a question have, you got to come on top I of the have, head I have songs, but, like, yeah. I, now I need to look up titles. Um, I would definitely choose a couple songs uh, okay. um, from Beyonce. Okay. And... Someone that I really most admire uh, for her fierceness and the way she lives her life is mm -hmm. Rihanna. Okay. Um, I definitely would say "Live Your Life." Um, okay. One of the older songs from the her and T.I. I always, I always can relate to. Why that, that song? Because we are only given one life, mm -hmm. and I think that society has brainwashed us that we have to live a certain way to mm -hmm. certain expectations, and that limits us. And it limits so many different people and what could potentially be a different life. Okay. 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 Any other songs? No, Shaw. Okay. All the songs. So, um, next question is, I feel like, you know, every, every great person's, you know, journey of life comes with a, a, a nice backstory. So what is the, the, your origin story or what led you to where you are today? Well, that is definitely a story. Yeah, um, I, I know it is. I think if you take, if I were to take it back uh, mm -hmm. to what is relevant to address to where I have come, from, mm -hmm. um, I would think that the important part is to um, acknowledge that I was a single mom mm -hmm. and I had two children by the time I was 19 years old. And it took me a very long time to get my life together. Okay. I was the sole provider for these two children. Mm -hmm. um, they are uh, my biggest accomplishments yeah. um, to date. Uh, but I think what's important is, is that, you know, I had this mindset way, 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 way back then that because I was a sole provider, I had to get myself together and I had to be the person to be able to take care of them and not let that cycle be repeated, mm. that, uh, the road that I traveled. And that is was that is the initial motivation to kind of change my life, uh, make better decisions, uh, go to school. It took me eight years to get an undergrad degree. I, um, at it. I waited tables for 10 years yeah. um, as I was working on my undergrad degree. Okay. And now uh, from that point, once I got into the field of mental health, uh, it, it was a lot easier because mm -hmm. I guess I had could see my path and my purpose. Right, right. Um, I didn't know I was going to be where I'm at today, mm -hmm. um, but it did, it was an opportunity. What did you thought you was going to be, or what you, what path do you feel like you're going to be on? I don't know that there. I don't really think about like the future. Mm -hmm. Future. I kind of live present day and just kind of like work really hard Ooh. towards whatever the next step is. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So you said something before. You say you were just kind of like, once you had your kids for a while, you're just kind of like living your life. So 
even though you didn't say this, it kind of sounded like like you probably weren't focused. You were trying, just kind of, you know, doing on a you know day to day basis what you had to do. So what made you say like, you know what, this isn't working. Let me kind of get back in school or you know, kind of not necessarily change your life, but you know. Okay, so it wasn't that I, I was always working towards my education, but mm -hmm. I think I think one of the things is that people don't necessarily know what they want to be when they grow up. True. True, true. And we put the pressure on 18 year olds to choose their um, college degree mm -hmm. of what is supposed to, by society standards, right. going to be their next 30, 40 years. <laughs> right, right, and right. it really, truly wasn't until I was in my late 30s that I knew, like, um, step by step where I was going to go. Mm, and okay. so I guess I really just kind of see it as trying to better yourself always. Gotcha. And that is where, you know, it kind of led me to where I'm at today because I didn't stay stagnant. I always worked towards another small goal, another goal, another goal, mm, okay. which in turn became life's journey. Mm, okay. Okay. So when did you know that you want to kind of get into like the mental health field? After I failed pre-calculus three times. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I get it. I definitely failed it twice. Did you? Okay, yeah. so I failed or withdrew from it three times. And then I said, all right, I need a degree. You can't do this. But I, I can't do no more math. <laughs> <laughs> what degree doesn't have any more math? Right, right, right. Okay, so that's when you're like, you know what? I'm going to go this route. Well, life circumstances also oh, okay. um, pushed me that way. And uh, someone very close to me um, told me that I should probably be a counselor. Really? And, yeah. And so then I went to ODU's handbook and I said, okay, a degree, no more math. All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay. So um, once you graduated, um, how long did it take you before you knew that you kind of wanted to work for yourself? So I worked another 10 years okay. in the field of mental health. I worked for a couple different agencies and I got to see different facets of how the agencies were ran. Mm -hmm. I try to take from the good and learn from what they probably should have corrected. Okay. And at some point I knew that I could do it. Okay. I didn't know that I could do it on a scale that I have um, landed now, mm -hmm. but I said, I, well, if they could do it. Yeah, I can, can at least it. shoot my shot. Right, right, right. And so. Do you, my fact, not to cut you off. Do you feel like that is a, a character flaw because I actually deal with that same thing. I was telling my wife, like, I feel like my biggest flaw is I look at what somebody else is doing and I say to myself, I can do that, but I can do it better. I don't think that's a flaw. You don't think it's a flaw? Yeah. Okay. Why would you think that's a flaw? Because then I feel like it leads you to like kind of just doing a whole bunch of different stuff just because, especially if it's something like within my wheelhouse, I always look at it like, oh, they doing that? I could do that and I can do it, you know. 10 times better. Mm -hmm. But then I look at that and I'm like, I start doing that. And then somebody see somebody else doing something. I'm like, I can do that too. And then they just kind of go back and forth like that. No, I don't think that's a character flaw. I think you probably just need to figure out like what you need to focus what, on. What you want to focus on. Because I'm in that position right now where I feel like I could do a lot of different things, but mm -hmm. I need to take a step back with my company and say, all right, before I go to the next goal or the next program, mm -hmm. you know, get this program really all together. Gotcha. 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 So during your early days of being in the mental health field, um, did you run into any like uh, getting burnt out? Because I know that's oh, a, a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I stepped away uh, due to burnout and I worked for uh, managed care. So it's the flip side of different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for five years or so, maybe. Okay. And I had a really sweet job. Mm -hmm. it, it was a gravy job. And I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> like the highlight of my day was where we going to lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like so above all that. I mean, it was okay money. Yeah. yeah. I still had to work to supplement my income. So I, I had always worked, right. you know, more than one job. But I knew that I needed to be in, in community mental health because that's really where the people need me. They need me. They need my company. They need my employees. Right. They need our help. Mm, okay. Okay. So when you first started your company, like, what did you feel like in your head that you wanted to create? Like, what did you want the company to be? So when I first started my company, mm -hmm. I had very small goals mm -hmm. because I don't think we realize our own potential. Right. So it was just um, the goal of 
trying to get in the game, uh, a very overly saturated market mm. and only focusing on us. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's what I'm really big on just like stay in your lane. Don't worry about the other companies. Don't worry about if this person's doing this or that mm -hmm. person's hating on you or stealing your clients. I don't worry about any of that. I just said, okay, let me figure out how to do it this way. Mm, um, okay. And not having a business background yeah. <laughs> is trial and error. Uh -huh. Even up until today, all of this is trial and error. Okay. Trying to figure out what works, taking the good um, that works, pushing that forward, mm -hmm. um, reevaluating and saying, okay, well, that didn't work uh, and taking it back to the drawing board. But you can't you can't be scared to do that and you can't be hard on yourself. You just have to say, all right, chop it up. It did that didn't work and keep pushing. I feel like that's easier said than done as far as like not being hard on yourself. Like just cause you'd be like, Oh, I, I definitely like messed that all the way up. Like I didn't have to do that. Maybe for a day. Yeah. And then you just How long do, do you hang on to it? No, 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 no. Yeah. I processed stuff pretty quickly, but I still like I really messed that up. No, I mess stuff up all the time. You just keep keep pushing. Yeah, how else am I gonna learn? That is true. There's it's, no. It's better to fail quick, as people say. Yeah. Yeah. It's those that want to keep at it, you know, or those that want to prove to themselves or to whoever, like they they have too much pride. Right. I don't have no pride when it comes to that. <laughs> Look, gotcha. I messed this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Right. <laughs> then what I'm gonna do to to fix it? Gotcha. So doing those first couple of years of your company, what were some of the, the ups and downs that you faced? Every day is up and a down. Right. Yeah. Or well, what were some of the, the major ups, major, some of the major uh, wins and ma some of the major losses that you might have faced? So the, I think because my company is only five years old, mm -hmm. we're at a pivotal point to really make change and mm -hmm. to take ourselves to the next level, oh, okay. a really good reputation. Um, but I, it's always like a learning game and it's always trying to like take a step back and say, all right, what, did, what could I have done differently? Mm -hmm. The pandemic, that definitely was. How did that affect you? That was huge. Really? Yeah, that changes the whole game, the whole playing field and. Did y'all stop working or? No. Oh, okay. I don't believe in no. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna work around right, here. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so it just but it just put a, a lot of pressure on me. Uh mm. to you have to change your mindset, figure out how you're gonna do things, put different policies in place, yeah. figure out how your clients are gonna still be serviced. Um so lots of different things happen. So that was definitely probably this last year has probably been the hardest. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Loss of money, uh, great financial loss, yeah. um, take a loss. High turnover, um, hard to find employees, everybody yeah. chilling. Yeah, everybody got unemployment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so how were you able to like kind of pivot your company from, or what does your company look like now when in regards to like, you know, pre-COVID versus, you know, post-COVID or in the midst of COVID? Well, I took a, I took a big leap of faith and expanded. Um, our office spaces mm -hmm. and then uh, there were really good things that happened yeah. last year. I bought two properties. Mm -hmm. I think that was also part of COVID because uh, they were, they probably, I probably wouldn't have had those opportunities right. to buy those properties. Mm -hmm. And I really um, put a lot of work in. Um, fear is a, was a motivator. I hate to live in, fe live in fear. but Were you living in fear a little bit? Yeah, that's what society wanted us to be living in. Oh, yeah, yeah. For, that's true. But only for a couple months. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like March through maybe like June. June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was kind of nervous about doing anything. Yeah, so breathing. Did. Right, right, right. Yeah. Didn't you want to go to the grocery store? Yes. Like all the toilet tissue was gone, all this type of stuff. So yeah. I definitely get it. But that was a motivator because I think what was preached was all the small businesses were going to fail and, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So that motivated me to work really, really hard to make a lot of different programs. Mm -hmm. And in turn, um, we had no choice but to really step our game up mm, like okay. by 100%. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm to the point where I, though it's, 
it's finally turning over and I have different programs that are opening mm. and now comes the hard work of you can put a program together, but you got to make sure it's a good program. Oh, right, you got to right, train right. your staff and you got to more trial and error. What works, what doesn't work, what go, going back to the drawing board. So, okay. uh, but that's what I love. Really? Mm -hmm. What coming up with the programs? Or? No, not coming, com not coming up with the programs, implementing them, implementing and perfecting them, gotcha. and learning from the trial and errors of what works and what doesn't work. Okay. So let me ask you this. I know a lot of people, especially in this area, are in the mental health field. Um, what makes a good program? You don't got to give me a secret sauce or nothing, but you know, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like in your head, like what makes just a, just a solid program that, you know, you know, clients are, it'd be an easy win for you. Good leadership. Okay. I think it starts with good leadership and a company that your employees are satisfied. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's not always easy. Yeah, you can't yeah. always please everybody all the time, but having employees that are flexible and knowing that, okay, we're starting from scratch. Guys, right. You got to work with us. Right. Right. And right. When you have employees like that, that are mm -hmm. willing to, you know, that, that are not just straight, narrow minded mm -hmm. and know that this is a trial and error phase, mm -hmm. which can be up to a year or so yeah, or even longer, you know, then it makes it easier. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I know you just mentioned employees and one of the, the main questions I have for you specifically was that it feels like with your team, like you have a, a family atmosphere yeah to some degree yeah. to some degree yeah okay maybe it might be just your core team but it looks like that y'all are always out like i just seen that you had a post where y'all went to like the little plant place or whatever like that <laughs> yeah that was good right so is that a conscious effort or is that just something that just naturally happens no it started off just the family. It started off myself, my sister, and my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. So I started this company with literally just the three of us. And okay. I have over 50 employees. Mm, okay. Um, I think the concept really is how can, how can we find balance that, um, one, I have employees that are loyal, mm -hmm. very loyal and dedicated to the mission. Right but also have the balance of, you know, work and, you know, life. Mm, okay. The fact that there are, there's two, two coins, two sides to the coin, that it's not all work and right, that we right. can also enjoy each other's company. But I mean, that's also trial and error. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some employees, I would say this employees, I have employees that are, have been there from day one mm -hmm. that are absolutely down and, you know, loyal and, really work hard and i'm so appreciative of those employees and then i have people that come and go you know everyone ain't built for this true so with that with what you just said how do you balance being i said the best way to say it how do you balance being their boss but then you know y'all like to hang out you know not necessarily being a friend but being friendly i guess yeah i've had to uh to work on that this year yeah yeah i've had to pull back Mm -hmm. um, change some of the strategies and some of the ways I uh, interact with my employees. You're right. I have had to work on myself. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that's that's a challenge. Really? Yeah, it is. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, cause I feel like that would be like the hardest part because, like, you want while you're at work to be, you know, you know, boss level, but you know, if somebody sent you out taking shots two nights before, then it's like sometimes the, those lines could be blurred a little bit. Not with me. Not with it. Not no, with you. We, we, we got to go to work. <laughs> right. Right, right. But I mean, work not, comes first. But I mean, not necessarily with, you know, them not doing work, but they might think y'all are too cool. Yeah. Or, yeah, oh, or something no, like that. Absolutely. Happened. Like I said, I've, I've learned. I've learned this year. Gotcha. I've definitely learned. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, I'm big into marketing. Like, I, I love marketing. Um, that's what I went to school for and everything. But, so how did you get, when you first started out, what were some of the things that you're doing to kind of get your, you know, name out there and get your business name out there so people, you know, can come to you? So in our field, um, it's not a marketing strategy per se. Right. Like I can't just go get an ad and, Yeah, you know, yeah, it don't really work like that. Yeah, not sure. in this field. Yeah. It's really based off the relationships and that you have within the community. And I didn't have any. 
None. Um, so how did you start to build it? Off of hard work. Really? Like one client. Just off of um, having a good reputation, putting in a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. One client would speak highly of us. The next client would come. And so for a lot of years, that's that's what it is. Now we're pretty, we have a good good reputation, right? Um, well known, and people reach out to us. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not easy. This really? Is, oh yeah, this is not an easy market to just break into. Not at all. Yeah, because I was wondering. Like, I've actually worked with a couple people in this particular industry, and I know like you can't really. There's a lot of things you cannot do. Cannot. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to kind of put yourself out there with those particular, you know, guidelines. Well, and not even that. You have companies that are very solid that have been around 30 plus years. Right. And they have very well established reputations and they're very well connected. And so yeah. you definitely are the little fish. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Okay. So I know you just mentioned being well connected. Another question I have for you. I want to get your thoughts on something. Um, what do you feel is the most important? Your networks of being connected, um, your work ethic, or just your natural skill set? Your work ethic. Really? Absolutely. Why do you say that? Because, um, well, a skill set can be learned. Right. And connect. But you might be real good at your skill set. Like Michael Jordan is great at his skill set. But I'm not Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But some people say, like, you just got a great skill. But he yeah, also but has a crazy. He, but how did he get, get that? He had a crazy set? work ethic. Yeah. yeah. If you look at all the basketball players or everyone that in sports, like, they train. They don't ever stop training. Right. That's how I work. I work. I don't ever stop. So okay. your work ethic. The connections, those relationships, I think they help you mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely... No, you got to get to the grind. You got to really? get to the hustle. Yep, absolutely. Hmm. I'm guessing you've probably run into people who don't have the hustle. Yes, they don't last long. Really? Yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, There's yeah. another place for them. It's <laughs> not with me. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, I believe in the phrase, you got to spend money to make money, right? So, what is something that you spent money on that gave you the, the highest return? Something that I've spent money on. Hmm. I'm not even gonna go there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I spent a lot of money. I spent a lot of money. I put a lot out. There yeah. is a lot of expenses that come right. that come with this. I don't know if I can fix, nail it down to one thing. Okay. Yeah. What's a couple of things? Maybe just not the one top tier thing, but. I don't know. I really don't know. That's really? Yeah, I got to come back to that. Okay. I feel like you, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like you take a lot of vacations. So maybe just kind of, do you feel like you take a lot of vacations? I could take more. I feel like everybody can. <laughs> <laughs> but do you feel like just kind of pouring, like reinvesting back into yourself kind of? I think that's great. I think every time I do go on a vacation, even if it's a brief one, that I do come back recharged and motivated. And, really? And they usually hate it when I come back because I'm like, all right, now I got a new plan and <laughs> <laughs> we're about to do this, 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 and this, and this. Got a whole bunch of new ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's one thing I feel like I need to get to more like just like going on vacation. I'm so like deep, like down into the hustle of it that. Sometimes we get like, all right, now I just need to kind of like go on an island for like three, four days. Three, four and, days. Yeah. That's all you need. That's true. Yeah. That's true. A baby moon. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. All right, guys, we're just taking a break from this video for one quick second just to remind you guys that if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. This channel is all about empowering different creators and entrepreneurs to really live the life that they want to live and make the money that they want to make. So if you like this video, please consider watching maybe the last two or three videos that we put out because I know you'll probably like those as well. So before we get back to the video, go ahead and just take five seconds, hit subscribe, and you're gonna love every minute of this journey that we're on. So once again, I'm Shy Harris, in case you didn't know, of the Rebel Society, and let's get back to this latest episode. All right, so uh, next question for you is, uh, 
What has been the biggest leap of faith moment that you've had in your career thus far? Quitting my job. That was a really big leap of faith. So mm -hmm. for the first year and a half, I worked like 80 hours a week, I worked seven days a week because I had to keep my full time job so that I could build the company up. And okay. at some point I was exhausted. Right. Um, and then I was also working at NASA, too. Mm -hmm. So I would literally work seven days a week. And what were you doing at NASA? I was their EAP counselor on site. So it was one day a week. It was a really sweet gig. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were doing like at least like four days. No, uh -uh. I was already working, right, right, <laughs> yeah, right. running my company, yeah. working overnight uh, at my other job that I had. Uh, and then at some point I just said, say, all right, you got to make this thing work, you yeah. know, because you, you hold on to that. And I think that that's a, other thing, people's problems. They hold on to their day job and they can't put figure out like when to pull the trigger so that they don't have they can just go all the way in. So when's the perfect time to pull the trigger? Because some people will work their day jobs and try to do both at the same time and not put all the energy they can into their uh, passion. But there's some people who are like, all right, well, I made a thousand dollars. Let me go ahead and hop out of here. Well, that's not that's wise. <laughs> true, true. But I know a lot of people that do that. So what's the perfect time? I don't know. I think everybody's circumstance is different. They have to be able to do that. You know, some people. Yeah. I also think that people have to be very realistic about whatever it is that they're doing. A lot of people have side hustles right. as hobbies yeah is that money is that hobby really going to make you some money mm -hmm. um but i recently had um very good conversations i'll give you an example with a trainer a personal trainer mm -hmm. and uh we literally went back and forth with you know how many clients it would take for her to quit her full-time job mm -hmm. and um she quit and that was what she needed to do you know, because when she, but she was scared. Yeah. I think fear is what stops us from doing so many different things. True. And, but she also was in a different situation. You know, she don't have, she didn't have children that she had to mm -hmm. make sure had health insurance and everything right, like that, right, which right. is her. And I mean, at any, any point, if she needed to go back, she, she, could, get she could go get another job, right. you know, but that was to me, like when I, when we took a really assess the whole situation, I was like, all right, girl. Why are you still working there? You know? Right. But she has a trait that, and she was good at what she did. Yeah. And I think that everybody kind of needs to have to figure that out. But mm. there's no easy. Like, there ain't no easy. There's always going to be the overlap. Yeah. You have to. You yeah. have to get to the hustle, the grind. Uh, and I don't think people realize that. People don't have that endurance. So do you feel like people feel like entrepreneurship is easy? Yeah. And it's not. It's the hardest oh, yeah, thing yeah, ever. Yeah. It's yeah. They do. They, they see like, oh, you got to make your own schedule. OK, I make my own schedule, but I'm up and in my office at 6 a.m. Right. You know, nobody holds me accountable but me. Yeah. And they think it's easy. It's not. It's tremendous amount of work all the time. I would say like entrepreneurship and being married is like on the same level as far as like the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Oh, OK. Yeah. I would say that, too. Yeah. I'm not married anymore. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> if they both are definitely difficult. <laughs> okay, so I know I just gave you a list of questions while we we're off air, but there is a question I have for you that I probably should have gave you that I just forgot. So I'm really big into like uh, psychology, right? Okay. So um, I feel like people find out what their superpower is when they can figure out like what draws people to them. Mm. Okay. So what do you feel like, what is it about you that draws people to you? I know that's probably one of the questions I should have gave you before, but. No, it's okay. Um, I think that it's really ironic because actually in the last couple years of my life is mm -hmm. really when I have been allowed to be me, like my true self. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of becoming enlightened about different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped caring about what, what people think. Yeah, what people think, what society puts on us. Um, mm -hmm. I also had a lot of change in my own personal life mm -hmm. that freed me to to let me be me. Mm -hmm. And I think that because I live very authentically, I would say, mm -hmm. you know, I, I share the good, I share the bad. 
I share when I'm doing great and mm -hmm. I share when I mess up mm -hmm. that people gravitate to that. Mm, okay. I haven't perfected any yeah. of this, you know, it's still. So you trying. feel like you being authentic, like just draws people to you? Definitely my authenticity, but also I am pretty awesome and amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of helps. Very humble, I see. <laughs> no, not humble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because I always like try to figure that out. Like, um, I was watching a movie about uh, people that scammed. It was a uh, like one HBO like Generation Hustle or something like that. But in, and every episode was about somebody who like just tapped into what drew people to them. They just used it for like negative things. Mm -hmm. But so it made me think like, all right, once you really tap into like. All right, what draws people to you? Then it's up to you to kind of use that to kind of, you know, get what you want out of life. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I definitely agree. Okay. okay. I think that's what's wrong with a lot of us is we don't know that. We don't know the answer to that. Right. And I don't know if I could have even answered that question a couple of years ago. Really? Yeah. Mm. So I know you just mentioned, like, you got to really tap into who you are. Do you feel like... It's just people in general that we put up, you know, so many facades that after a while we kind of forget who we are. And I know this is going way deeper than, you know, business. What do you mean? Like. How? Forget how? Like, I feel like we, you know, as we are, you know, as we grow up, we're taught like if you're this particular way. Like, you know, I like to do these particular things. People are like, ah, oh, that's trash or that's whack or whatever the case. So you start to kind of hide from the ways that you used to, hide from the things that you like to do. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of, you start to kind of shut off certain parts of your personality. Isn't that sad? That is very sad. Yeah. There's so many people that live very unfulfilled and unhappy lives. Right, right, right. Because so I feel like at a certain point in life, you just like, like you did, like probably like just, Fuck it, I'ma just kinda just be me and whoever rocks with me, rocks with me. If you don't, if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, but that does that takes a lot of um work. A lot of work, a lot of work within yourself. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to be very confident. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you gotta put in the grind, you know. Like I didn't get here magically. Right, you know? right, right, right. And I the way I can call the shots now. I couldn't have done six years ago, yeah. but I always had a, a very strong sense of myself, mm -hmm. but that took a lot of work, you know, mm. to get to that. And that's what I don't think people, I think people are pressured by so many different outside forces that yeah. they do. They lose themselves. People get stuck. They get trapped. They get trapped in marriages. They don't even like their wives or their husbands. Right. They don't like all that. They don't like their job. They're scared to quit. You know, all these different things and they're scared of what this person's going to say or what that person's going to think. Their mom's going to feel this way. Mm -hmm. And in turn, they water themselves down. That is true. That happens a lot. That happens a lot. OK. All right. So I've got a couple more questions before we kind of wrap this up. OK. Um, matter of fact, we're going to do a little speed round. So we're going to kind of just. Oh, Lord. Here we go. We're just going to kind of breeze through this. So I got a, <laughs> a couple questions, but I kind of want to get to all of them. All right, so speed round. What is one model you live by? One model I live by? Yeah. Live your life, like live your true, live your truth, even if that's hard. Take okay. a hard look at yourself and, you know, figure out what you're unhappy with and make some changes. Okay, well, I can work with that. All right, uh, what have you learned from a negative Customer, client, employee experience. Oh, keep your lawyers on deck. <laughs> I actually like that. That, that works yes, for me. Absolutely. Don't have, like, I, what I did learn was, is you don't have a lawyer when you're in trouble. You have to have your relationships um, yeah. beforehand. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. Um, advice for somebody starting off in your industry. Outside of hustle. I feel like you're going to say that. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say that. Um, be flexible. Be okay. open to the many changes that comes mm -hmm. in, within this industry. And uh, just like only just focus on your your company, your mission, you mm -hmm. know, what, you, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Don't worry about the outside. Mm, okay, okay. All right. Uh, what are 
probably the three most pivotal moments in your life or career that have kind of led you to where you're at today? Uh, finishing up my bachelor's, going mm -hmm. into the field for sure. Um, being, gaining all the different experience that I have, mm -hmm. and then uh, really quitting my my job and like going all the way in, and just letting this be the only income only that thing. I have. Yeah, putting my one hundred percent into this all the time. Okay, I feel like that was probably like a struggle for you. Yeah, of course, yeah. because I had four children. You know, the you we're we're always taught to have. Um, a safety net. Uh -huh. and, I mean, you, I can't be dumb. You know, right, right. I can't let the lights go out. Or <laughs> work should not get paid. All right, 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 right. Okay. And last question is a. Uh, it's a two part question. What do you ultimately want to be known for, and what would uh, stroke your ego? Well, I hope I am known for um, when this is all done and over with for change. I hope that people will see me as a mental health advocate mm -hmm. that worked um, really, really hard to break down the stigma of um, us as a culture of black individuals not seeking mental health because mm -hmm. that's really like a lot of my focus. I want to be able to, you know, encourage and push uh, forward um, healing within mm -hmm. our community so that individuals can grow because I feel like that's really one of the only ways that we're going to be able to um, grow generationally. Mm -hmm. We have to heal. There's so much trauma we have to heal from. True. Yeah. And okay. you said, what was the other part? What do you, what do you want in, in your life to happen that will like stroke your ego? Like, like uh, I did that. I did that. I really want my own talk show. That really? Would, oh yes. That would really stroke my ego. It's like been a goal. So I actually said that in one of my classes in undergrad. Like they said, what do you want to do? Like when uh -huh. you grow up and I was like, I want my own talk show. And like the teacher laughed at me and I was like, what's funny? Like, I'm, serious. <laughs> I'm so dead serious. <laughs> it might end up being a podcast. Right, right, right. That's what I want, you know? Okay. Do you have a podcast? Before? No, uh, I've never had a podcast. Okay. I okay. thought about it. You should definitely do it. Yeah. <laughs> I had to find some time. Yeah, you got to make time for that. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. All right. So as we wrap this up, what's next for you? What you got coming up? Where can people find you at? All that good stuff. So I am, I have a lot of different things going on. I have, we, we're doing a lot of different services at Life's Journey. Mm -hmm. um, I can be found uh, on, uh, you can call us. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way. Right. If you need our help, any type of counseling services, mm -hmm. um, our number is 757 six two two zero seven zero zero okay we also have our instagram life's journey services mm -hmm. um we also have i have a nonprofit, projects life's journey okay but right now really we're just focusing on the programs that we have opened up and really trying to you know get better at them and mm -hmm. so one step at a time okay cool 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 well i appreciate you coming up here like i said i had to get you up here you know you know, sooner or later, you know. <laughs> Thank you kinda, for letting me come yes, on. Yes, 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 yes. I definitely appreciate, you know, all the, the wisdom and knowledge that you, you know, spoke about today. So, um, so you guys, I definitely appreciate you checking out this episode. Um, you know, if you haven't done so already, make sure you go and follow Benicia as well as me and make sure you subscribe to this channel. And um, that's pretty much all I have. So uh, you guys stay safe, stay running free, but keep creating, keep shooting. And you guys have a good one. Bye.